Goa is widely known as a popular tourist destination, but it is also a place for anyone looking for a deeper connection with the sea. For young working professionals like Avantika, a love for the sea also comes with a sense of ownership. I think observing the life of the sea just a little bit was fascinating. Um, it started off by romanticism, like we all feel. I, want, I like the beach, I, I, whatever. But it grew into a little bit more uh, through diving, I feel, through diving. In five, six years of diving myself, I've, I've seen the decline of, of, of the color of the coral, for example. And that hurts, right? Uh, and someone who's close to the water sports personally, th that's my community, that's the people you be with. Um, it's nice to be able to do something, even if it's just a little bit. Today, Avantika is showing her support for Goa's coral reefs in an unusual way, by becoming a foster parent. But this is no conventional adoption. Through the efforts of fellow diver Venkat Charlu, Avantika is adopting a coral fragment. I'm definitely going to adopt a coral because I think it's really cool. Uh, it's a really cool way to create impact. Because when you make people feel like they own something and when they lose it, it hurts that much more. This was our pilot project. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the form that we need you to fill, which is your name, address, email, and number. These are just for our records. It is estimated that almost 50% or 60%, depending on who you speak to, uh, will say that 50 or 60% of the corals worldwide have gone and they're not coming back. And this has happened in the last decade, which is not very long ago when you think about it, even in our lifetimes. A former banker with a passion for scuba diving, Venkat's marine journey eventually culminated with forming Coastal Impact, an organization that now focuses on restoring Goa's coral reefs. So we just said, Let's uh, start the Adopt a Coral program. And it's a one year uh, adoption period where we give them a certificate of adoption, we give them the photograph of the coral fragment, we give them the sizes with a promise that we will give them a fresh photograph at the end of one year with the increased sizes. So it starts from the fundamental question that what is coral? Because a lot of divers don't know about that, right? So they'll ask, what is coral? Is it an animal? Is it a vegetable? Is it a mineral plant? What is it? So the education process keeps happening. And once they realize that it's a living animal, and when they realize that 60% of their oxygen is coming from them, from the seas and healthy oceans, that's enough to spur them into action. In the larger scheme of things, these adoptions contribute to Venkat's coral transplantation program at Grand Island, one of the few places in Goa to have a coral population. The island has around 20 genera of coral and supports a diverse fish population. The transplantation takes place entirely underwater, on site, a short distance from the island. Existing coral pieces are ethically sourced from the seabed around the island and no actual reef is disturbed, Venkat tells us. A complicated process, Venkat is supported by a dedicated team of marine biologists, divers and volunteers. So the transplantation process basically involves our making, fabricating beds like this, uh, tables like this, which are empty. It's just a frame of the table with two rows, where two rolls of tiles, which are one foot by one foot. So you have six tiles on the top row, six tiles on the bottom row, and they sit in there and we cable tie them to keep them secure. So once these bed has been prepared, 
we will go to the site where we need to pick up the corals which we are going to populate there with we go there pick up the tiles carry it under the boat tied with a rope so they don't come up above the surface of the water that shop stops them from getting stressed so we get it to the site of the transplantation and we lower it into the water take out the pieces and cut them so we need to cut corals which could be as thick as this so we need these kind of shears these are bone cutters which are used by doctors etc so these are very sharp so you trim those pieces into like 2 to 3 cm each The coral fragments are then stuck to the tile using a special coral friendly certified epoxy. Each tile holds four coral fragments. It is however a race against time. Once prepared, the epoxy hardens in a matter of 15 minutes. And because coral is classified under the schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act, it is only Wenkat and the two members of his core team that may handle the fragments. The transplanted coral is then kept in an underwater nursery where it is tended to periodically. Once the pieces have grown to a sufficient size, they are planted onto the actual reef. Though it may sound straightforward, coral maintenance comes with its challenges. The coral beds are susceptible to the weather and underwater currents, and there is no guarantee that the transplanted corals will even survive. So why is Wenkert going through all this trouble? Aaron Lobo, a marine biologist, explains how coral reefs form the foundation of all marine life. Coral reefs are a keystone ecosystem. When I say keystone, it's like everything rests on that particular ecosystem. And with each one of these coral heads, you'll see a large diversity of species, ranging from massive groupers that can live up to 60 odd years, big Malabar groupers. to tiny damsel fish to tiny little gobies uh, to a whole range of invertebrate species it also acts as an area that kind of tends to these areas tend to populate surrounding areas with fish so it becomes a very very important source not just for the divers there but to support livelihoods of other communities the role played by corals in supporting marine life is complex and this is another challenge that marine conservationists face the general lack of awareness around them as a result coral reefs have fallen prey to a host of human induced factors such as overfishing and pollution you have one which is overarching climate change wherein our ocean temperatures are sort of heating up temperatures are rising it's also the stressors that happen at a local level pollution from effluents that run off if you think of grand island uh, there are all kinds of pollution you know there is uh, sediment that comes in there's a port very close uh, very nearby the sediment from the rivers but then there is also other forms of pollution that are increasing over time plastic pollution is even apparently the sunscreen that you wear on your body can negatively impact the reef and as a result coral reefs are dying because of heavy fishing pressure around the reefs certain species that would keep the reef free of the weeds that would take over there are certain species of algae macro algae that cover the reef once it bleaches and if you don't have these herbivorous fish very much like the goats and the deer in the forest that would potentially feed on some of the weeds uh the coral reef basically gets smothered it dies but how are the consequences of reef degradation being felt in goa How is it affecting the livelihoods of other stakeholders? We went to Baina Beach to get first-hand accounts from the resident fishermen. बाहर जितना भी है क्योंकि यहाँ पे मच्छी अगर बढ़ेगा ना तो बाहर भी जाएगा, फैलेगा, फैलेगा। तो आपका, आपके लिए अच्छा है वो। पहले इतनी मच्छी थी कि हमसे पकड़ा नहीं जाता था, इतनी बंद थी, बहुत, बचपन से। और मेरे दो बच्चे हैं। भी बच्चे हैं माँ बाप है फैमिली है मेरी तो इसी से हम गुजारा कर लेते हैं अपना पेट का तो पहले इतना था कि कमा के रख सकते थे आगे खा सकते थे पर अभी वो परिस्थिति नहीं रही अभी फिशिंग पे क्या है थोड़ा लोग बोलते हैं वहाँ आइलैंड पे वहाँ नेट डालना है ये आइलैंड पे नेट डालना है 
हमारा पेट वही है जब हम कहीं दूर जाते हैं तो मछली नहीं मिलती एक दिन मिलती है दो दिन मिलते हैं यहाँ क्या है थोड़ी बहुत कुछ मिलती है तो हमारा गुजारा चल जाता है अपनी फैमिली को पाल सकते हैं तो ऐसी परिस्थिति हो गई सर When fishers go out, if they, particularly if they don't know that there is coral down there, which is the usual case here locally, because fishermen are not aware of corals at all, so they drop the anchor, and that unfortunately does a lot of coral damage. So uh, we are trying to develop a lot of initiatives with them, in the sense that because they are one of the primary stakeholders, we want to get more involved with them, and they need to understand and realize that what we are doing is for their benefit. So we will need definitely all their support. Efforts by the government to make Grand Island a marine protected area however have been met with swift resistance from the fishing community along with the rest of the coastal impact core team venkat conducts awareness programs for the fishermen educating them about marine life and how ocean health impacts their catch they have also set up mooring buoys around the coral reefs as an alternative to dropping anchor so we can understand वहाँ कोरल है वहाँ मछली बारीक हो जाएंगी उसके बाद में बड़ी मछली आ जाएंगी तो हम उधर पकड़ सकते हैं मछली ये ओके है और जो आप बोलते हैं कितने के डिस्टेंस रखना है तो हम उससे भी एग्री है पर ऐसे नहीं कि वहाँ पर पाबंदी है जाना नहीं नेट नहीं डाल सकते हम मान सकते हैं पर वहीं से गुजरना है आना जाना है ये तो बंद नहीं हो सकता From a jurisdictional point of view, Grand Island happens to fall under multiple government bodies. Venkat's conservation work requires coordination with the forest and fisheries departments. He is counting on their support for the next phase of his coral restoration plans, the creation of artificial reefs or ARs as they are commonly known. Either 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 time. So it's an octagon and we have framed for a tile. 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 So we have made it like a wave shape. so that there is enough place on all sides which is empty it's open space where fish can go in and literally make a home and if they are in danger for example they would go inside that stuff till date coastal impact has transplanted over 500 pieces of coral on their most recent dive for the ar project Coastal Impact deployed the first 5 units of artificial reefs and plan on adding another 45 units over the coming months. Venkat has big plans for coral restoration, but he understands that it is a long road ahead. To be very honest, and I will be brutally honest, I don't think we have made much of a dent because things in nature uh to make an impact or uh, actually need to be done on a very very big scale you're talking about a massive ocean there you're talking about factors which are way beyond our control so it will take a lot more effort on our part a lot more teamwork lot more collaborations lot more funding hell of a lot more of everything for us to see actual changes uh, a tangible changes i would say in the whole scheme of things Yeah, restoration efforts are happening across the world, but the first principle with any kind of rep, uh, restoration is the precautionary principle, wherein you reduce or stop the stressors that are causing the decline in the first place, and then you think about restoring. And when you think about restoring, you got to keep context absolutely specific to the area, to the community, etc. what what kind of species are there you can't just go about restoring random species in random places it's very context specific and it's got to be ecologically monitored and restored Thanks for watching Eco India. If you like the story, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to scroll.in on YouTube.